So I will be talking a little bit about the past, present, and future of substrates. So sort of where we came from and where we want to be going, ideally. First of all, substrates comes from um, a long sort of history of work. Like you just said, the company was started around Ethereum and we've done a bunch of work there. Uh, we've built several blockchain clients and we've been involved in a lot of blockchain projects. And I think it's pretty safe to say that we, we know the needs of layer one solutions and like layer one blockchain. And uh, while the first commit by Rob was on November 7th, 2017, uh, the the work that's gone into Substrate actually builds on a lot of previous work. So we were able to drop in a WASM execution engine basically on day one because we'd already done that work for PWASM in Ethereum. And so even though we've been working on this since 2017, it actually builds on work that goes even further beyond that. So this is a project that's many years in the making actually. It didn't start out as a thing on its own though. We set out with the goal of building Polkadot, which was another blockchain client. But as we were building that, we realized that we were actually repeating a bunch of the stuff that we're doing. We were redoing a bunch of stuff. And there isn't a need to do that. So on February 18th, we broke out, uh, we actually renamed the Polkadot repo to Substrate. And then we broke out all of the Polkadot specific stuff to a repo on its own. And this um, kind of goes to the point of, of collaboration. So I was saying, yeah, Parity has put a bunch of work into this, but actually um, it's both the philosophy of Parity and of, of Substrate that we can't do everything ourselves. We don't want to invent everything. Um, and so we collaborate. We collaborate with a bunch of things. And I th think we were one of the first adopters of Wasm. Uh, we work with Mozilla to try to build compilers and other things. Uh, we work with Protocol Labs to try to get you know, libp2p in a networking solution that works for everyone. Um, we don't want to you know, fall into the not invented here problem. And um, I think that's a little bit of why we're all here today, because we want to all collaborate. <clears throat> so parity was, sorry, Substrate was really started out of this question. How can we save people from doing all of this work? Uh, it's a lot of work to build a blockchain clients. And um, in a world where like the core thesis of Polkadot is that there exists many chains. And if there exists many chains, there exist many teams that are building chains. And we don't want to have to spend several years on each of those chains just to get the basics right. So that's really where Substrate is coming from. It's answering this question, how can we save all of this work for people? Moving on a little bit to where we are, um, you know, the, the Substrate repo or the Polkadot repo back then was really started by kind of these four people. Like they, they were the ones committing to, to this stuff first. And uh, I think Gav in particular was very excited to get back to coding in the first couple of months. Um, but today we're actually seeing a repo with over 70 contributors, both inside and outside the company. And this is only to the Substrate repo, not to any of the supporting repos. We actually have this Parity Common repo that has a lot of common code shared between different projects. And um, like it doesn't count any con contributions to the Wasm tool stack and other things like that. Like I mentioned, the, the company is about 80 people. It's actually doubled in size roughly over the past year or so um, since we started this project, and that is to accommodate all of the extra work that's necessary to get this shipped. And while not everyone works on Substrate directly, it all contributes to it in some way. If we have people working on optimizing some code for Ethereum, then eventually that will make its way into the Substrate repo as well. If someone is working on the Zcash client or Ethereum 2, that experience and that knowledge makes its way into Substrate eventually. And so we're still growing. Uh, we're still adding people to both the company and trying to get more contributors in various ways, adding people to the docs team, to education, to operations and more. But really, it's, it's actually quite reassuring to be able to say that with the people that we have in the company and our external contributors, we actually believe that we have the talent we need to ship what we want in the near term. 
Um, we do still hire the occasional stellar developer, but really the technical talent is there to, to get this done. So speaking about 1.0, uh, hopefully we'll see that come out uh, in the next couple of days. We'll see, been said that before, but <laughs> um, hopefully uh, during this conference we might see it. And um, what is 1.0 anyway? What does that mean to us? Uh, 1.0 means a lot of things to different people, so I think it's good to set the expectations clearly here. For us, 1.0 doesn't really mean all that much more than the APIs that you would use to build a substrate chain are stable. They won't change. We're not counting any particular feature set to be part of 1.0. We're not saying, oh, this is the thing that we think is going to you know, be the platform going forward. Uh, we'll be adding more stuff to it and, and um, building it out much more. But what you see in 1.0, basically, if you use Substrate node templates, that's going to stop breaking every week. And so what it really means is it'll be a lot easier to build on Substrate going forward. With 1.0, we are also changing the license. I get questions about this all the time. We are definitely changing the license to Apache 2. We have said this before. It's, it's for real. We're definitely changing it and uh, changing it now with, with the 1.0 release. I also want to mention a couple of other active efforts that are going on in sort of the Substrate ecosystem. It's not all coding. We've spent a lot of effort over the past couple of months to get better documentation. And you know, documentation is one of these things that it's never done, it's a never ending process. Uh, we put a lot of effort into it, but we still fully realize that it's not exactly where we want it to be. We still want it to improve quite a lot. And we're hiring and uh, building a team to, to accomplish this. And documentation takes many different forms from reference docs to guides to tutorials and other things. And this is what the developer hub is. We actually have quite a grand vision for what we want the developer hub to be. But, um, you know, we still need to build up the team around that. And we're taking baby steps in, in the direction of getting it somewhere. Um, you know, it should be the go to place that you can find anything that you need to know about Substrate. But um, to really be successful there, we also need to know what you need to know. So we can speculate about what we think people should know, but ultimately it's the people in the audience here today that defines what we should be writing about. We also want to get better at answering questions. So we can sit in the you know, technical, substrate technical riot channel all day and answer questions, but none of those questions or answers are Googleable. Uh, they sort of disappear after a while. There's also not that much community engagement. It's mostly parody people answering questions there. And so we want to find better ways of answering questions. We're going to start uh, filtering or like moving some of that Q&A traffic to Stack Overflow. Uh, but we're also keeping our ears and eyes peeled for other ways and better ways to answer questions from you guys. And ways that we can utilize the full community and, and actually have other community members and people outside of Parity help answering questions as well. So what roughly is the, the state of the code now? Um, with 1.0, um, I'm sure you've all seen this slide in some variation in some presentation in the past. It's kind of used everywhere. It goes over a little bit of like what's, used, what's built in in Rust, what's, what goes into WASM, what uh, you know, lives inside consensus and outside, and things like that. Uh, but it's obviously a very simplified view. You know, slightly closer to reality is maybe something like this. <laughs> um, you know, libp2p is definitely one major component, but another whole area of research and, and, and engineering is syncing and syncing algorithms. RPCs are a massive amount of work to do, and databases are likewise a massive area and we've had experts dig into the way we use our database and we've looked at and experimented with writing our own database. Um, we are experimenting with writing smart contract languages and Rust and DSLs and things like that. And we are at a point now where all of these components feel pretty solid to us. We are pretty confident that they are where we want them to be and you know it works. Um, 
there's obviously still you know, polish to be made at various areas, but uh, we're pretty far along and we kind of know what we have and what we need. And I want to say too that um, if you're building with substrate, all of these pieces are things that you don't have to rewrite if you just use substrate. If you're building your own blockchain client, you have to care about and build all of these things yourself. And speaking about not having to rewrite things, uh, we're actually getting a relatively fleshed out substrate runtime module library now as well. So these are the modules that exist currently and that are relatively well documented. And uh, it's quite a, quite a large array now. And our goal here is really to provide the Lego pieces that you can use to you know, put together your chain with the functionality and properties that you want. But like in extension, obviously, you may want to take one of these modules and modify it, or you want to add your own modules alongside them. Um, there's, there's a lot to sort of work with here. Um, I think we have all the basics in place. So there are things like the balances module that deals with a thing that every chain needs in some way uh, with like balances and accounts. Um, there's the more core kind of stuff, like the consensus module deals with how um, the authorities, like the on-chain authority sets, interacts with the consensus algorithm. Um, there's staking that deals with deposits and whatever it takes to do, have staking on a chain to higher level concepts like democracy, um, you know, that deals with stakeholder voting and everything else that comes along with that. And you may want on-chain governance, but you maybe want some variation of democracy that isn't what we're providing out of the toolbox, but hopefully you should be able to take this module modify it to your own needs or, or at least take inspiration from it when you're writing your own. And we've made a huge push over the past couple of months for this conference to make sure that all of these are reasonably well documented. And so you can find the uh, SRML overview at the developer hub and uh, find links to all of the more detailed documentation for all of these modules. So where are we going? Um, first of all, uh, I want to sort of set the expectation that um, you know, we put a ton of effort into Substrate. Over the next six months or so, our main focus is going to be launching Polkadot. And of course, this means um, a lot of things. Like we're not focusing on shipping new features for Substrate, but in trying to ship Polkadot will probably need new things or more things from Substrate. So it's actually quite possible that we'll hit like a Substrate 2.0 or even more before the launch of Polkadot. But of course, like the core thesis of Polkadot, why it exists is to have parachains and parachains, um, we want Substrate, like we at Parity want Substrate to be the best way to build parachains. And you know, to, to do that, we need substrate to, to evolve and be better. So um, these things obviously go a bit hand in hand, but all of this is to say that um, we believe like hitting 1.0 is the start of substrate's life, um, but it's also like um, a, a point of stability for the next six months or so. But obviously we want substrate to go beyond Polkadot. Uh, it shouldn't just be a parachain framework uh, or something that only serves Polkadot. It should be an experimentation platform, platform for discovery and to make innovation radically much simpler. But um, basically it should be a general framework to build things that are blockchain-like. And I say blockchain-like because it doesn't necessarily need to be a blockchain. It can be things like a plasma chain or a ZK snark roll-up chain. Things that need the infrastructure and the components of a blockchain, but don't necessarily need to be um, a full-on blockchain. But there are some opinions baked in. So to quote uh, Gav, you should be able to build any chain but not necessarily sync any existing chain. And by that, uh, we just mean that you should be able to accomplish and build anything that you want to build, but there are 
uh, choices to be made on like networking protocols and things for any specific protocol that makes it, you know, it, we're basically saying we're not going to be able to tweak any possible parameter in the protocol. There, we have opinions on how networking should work or how consensus should work or what should be allowed or not and best practices. And those are baked into the framework. That's what you get with the framework as well. And of course, I can't talk about the future without being a little bit cheesy. Uh, the future of Substrate is you. It's the people sitting in this room now. Um, we can't really do this without you. So Parity's put a bunch of effort and a bunch of work to bootstrap Substrate from this idea to something that's real and something that you can use. But we want to start moving from this bootstrapping mode where we're pushing stuff out and we'll continue pushing stuff out and build our vision for what we think it should be. But we want to switch to this more robust, inclusive, open source software community um, where really it's not just parody working on this thing. So we're, we're really building this together. Like whether you're using it, whether you're like contributing through uh, writing docs or writing code or what, whatever you may be doing, uh, you are directly contributing to Substrate in some way. And it wouldn't, like, if it wasn't for the people in this room, we wouldn't have the feedback that we need to build something that people want. And that's like, if, if no one uses this thing, then ultimately the whole effort is pointless. So it's because of the you guys here today that, that this is, it is a real thing. But we also need help. So we fully realize that we don't, like Parity doesn't have the resources to make Substrate into everything that it could be. We can't hire everyone and we simply don't have the cash for that. So uh, we need your help in build, building out, you know, Substrate, making it uh, successful and making it all that it can be. And if I could have one goal and one hope for this conference for the next two days, is that we start creating these paths to a more active open source community, getting more contributors in um, and getting more people involved. And we also want to do everything that we can to make sure that you are successful. So um, one idea we had for, for this conference was um, while Parity can't hire everyone, uh, we know almost all the projects in this ecosystem. So if you're interested in, in working in this ecosystem, we can maybe try to match you up with other companies that are hiring. Um, so uh, Bjorn created this uh, link for um, where you can leave your details to basically sign up if you're interested in being co contacted about opportunities in this space. Another thing um, that we can do is you can you can collaborate more directly with us, and uh, that's that's this guy's job. Like Bjorn, oh, you can ping him on Riot. Where uh, can you stand up? Where are you? Right there. So this guy, his entire job is to make you successful. That's pretty cool, right? Like th there's a guy and a whole team behind him to make sure that you are successful in trying to do what you want to do. And so if you want help with anything, that's a guy to talk to. And finally, I want to say a huge thank you from everyone at Parity. We've been working on this for years. It's a massive amount of effort and it's been, it, it's really amazing to see everyone here and see everyone come out, see everyone care about it, start using it, like it's becoming reality. And it's, it's really amazing to see. So a uh, big, huge thank you from everyone at Parity. <laughs>